me see if I can share my screen. Is the correct screen is sharing? Looks that way. Perfect. Hello. Hello, everybody. Well, we are starting the webinar regarding controls and uh, non-conformance disorders, rejections and stuff. And uh, yeah, I will be the one today presenting the webinar. My name is Thomas. Uh, I think most of you know me as far as I can see from the attendees. And uh, with me, I have today my very good friend and colleague, Linus, Mr. Implementation Guy, that uh, yes. you will help with the questions. And, uh, Absolutely. And, and of course, receive some emails from me while we are doing that in, uh, in Impact. So uh, I do not have... Um... Do you want to say something, Linus, before we start? No, it's fine. Continue. All right. I will just Perfect. be your sidekick. All right. So basically, uh, I do not have a PowerPoint presentation. Today, it's a free flow webinar. I want it to be a little bit of a workflow slash training regarding controls. And for some also, you know, new people uh, that they are new using the software or people who are might interested in the software to see how fast and easy it is to use the controls, but with uh, some explanations on the side. So, so as you can see here in my screen, and uh, if you take me, make me smaller or something on the side, then you can see here, I have a little model here, looks just a normal building. And most of you know that we have the elements here on the model view, and then we have the cast calendar. So the first thing regarding controls today, we're not gonna plan elements, we're not gonna see how easy it is to plan elements and all these things, but in order for us to be able to do controls or perform the controls on an element, of course, we have to have the element planned for production. And in order to do that, I will just select randomly this element here, and maybe I can, I don't know, I'll just take one, move it to my calendar on the 29th of, uh, of May. And uh, Linus, I hope you can also kind of uh, pay attention here. And you will see here that I have one element and the controls on this element are already predefined. On this specific element, I have added two controls, a pre-production control, how I call it, and a post-production control. So very quickly, workflow, take the element, put it in the, in the cast planner. If we look at it in status, in status wise, you will see that this element has now become uh, blue. This means that it is planned for production. The rest of the elements, let's assume that there is no drawing yet for them. So no, no plan for production. How did I add the controls? As far as I know, for example, this element here might not have any controls. So I will go and show you the difference between an element that has already predefined controls and an element, oh, okay. This element has also controls. Uh, anyways, very quickly, we can just right click and uh, and say that uh, we can actually, you know, uh, remove the controls from the from this element. We right click on the bed. Now it is the controls are away. So there are two ways of actually adding control. You might notice here that there is the red line that shows basically that we have a control that has not been performed. And we have the white line here that shows that we basically do not have any controls in our element. So how do I add controls? There are multiple ways of adding controls on an element, but the two most common ones is basically you select the element on the model view, right click and say, add element controls. It is down here select the controls that you want to add to the element. As you can see, this is a sandwich wall and always the sandwich controls will be shown here for a sandwich element. And then I want to add the pre-production, the post-production. You can see I have created two with category my name. Uh, I'll say, okay. And when I do that, I'll press refresh and I'm expecting in the cast planner also have updated the element controls. It is that easy. As you see, 
another way to do it, of course, would be to right click, uh, add element control from here, and then of course, add the controls on the table. This is, uh, this is pretty much how easy it is regarding the controls. And now that we see how the controls show. Yes, Linus, do you have a question? Yes, can I just ask a quick question? Can we add the controls on uh, several elements at the same time? Yes, of course. I, that's a good question because I have already done that before. But basically, if you do it like that, right, and you right click and you say add element controls. Now I have different types of elements, right? Uh, in this case, okay, maybe I got only the slabs, but it shows for the slabs. And then you, you see you have only one control here. And then maybe we can see it, for example, if I select the holocore, a sandwich wall, and a slab here, right? Let's say add element controls and see it here. That it will show for all the different types that I have. I have for home slab, I have for a slab, I have for holocore and a sandwich. Don't worry, you select the corresponding control that you want to add on this specific project, right? And then, of course, for the holocore, the holocore control will be assigned to it. A sandwich will get it. So it's not all the elements will get the same controls in that sense, right? So I think it is it is pretty simple and intuitive in that sense. But in this case, I have only added controls in the walls because there is not really, you know, if you can do walls, then I guess you can control everything. Um, if I go back to my to my controls here in the resource manager. Now I change the software. Resource manager, as I usually say, it is the tool for you know the whole database. This is where we get information for the whole database. And then I can load my project here. I can actually you know find this uh, web project that I have made. How much we have today? The 16th, yes. And then press refresh data. And it will take a little bit of time. And you will see that uh, I have the controls that I have added on the elements. Uh, this is, I have only two here because those two, they have uh, status 30, meaning that they are planned for production. I have more and of course uh, we can, uh, and then we can say like, you know, we can select this one and say not plant on cast, refresh and get all the elements in the project that I have added controls on. That's not the case here. That's not what I want to do. I just want to show you. Um, that this is where you get uh, some of the controls in um, in the resource manager. So let's go and uh, perform a control because I said the workflow, but of course with some training explanation on the side, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to perform the pre-production control. So I'll take it how it goes. And yes, a question that you might ask, and that maybe has to do with the holocore element when something is produced in a line, if we have to do these controls one by one in an element, right? And yes, we do. Every element has to be controlled um, separately than the others, even though in theory, when you produce, for example, a holocore line, every holocore is not yet itself uh, pre-production. There might be some workarounds there that we can discuss on how to do that efficiently pre-production, but that's not the case now. I'm just answering maybe a common question there. So I will uh, go here and I will press this button element control. You know, you can right click also and find it. I just try to find different ways. And then you have simple checks. Of course, this is not something that we will do from the project manager. I'm doing it for the project manager ma now because later on, I'm also going to show you how to do it from the mobile phone. So I have TeamViewer on my phone here, and I will do that live on um, in here also because I love the mobile app and I love how to show these things uh, live. So simple checks, you select, you do first this one. When you do this one, then you activate the next one and the next one, then you say save. And the moment that you say save, the date, the time, and the person who did the controls uh, has, um, you know, has activated, and then the main control is also uh, saved. In that case now, because I do not have, uh, I, I didn't do it from the mobile app, I can search for attachments inside my computer. 
I think in theory I have one called pix and then I can select for example a picture that I want to add in here and that's uh, you know that's one picture I can say open and then you see just does something that uh, resembles a precast element and then also I can also you know if I want to I can also attach a PDF I don't really know what that picture is but I will try to see if that's uh, okay yeah it is just a model like that I have created into PDF and I have just added here so I have a picture and a PDF right that's it say save the pictures everything is saved I close my element control here and I'm expecting automatically then you press refresh update anything this element now is planned and approved this is the status color has changed here and immediately you can see what states we are also this line here which I speak a lot without showing you how to do it which is part of the settings that uh, you can use the cell rectangle to use the control color becomes green and becomes green because now it basically tells us that we are adding this table to pour concrete so we can produce the the element everything is done now we're pouring concrete and we can set the status to produce what happens now if i decide you know what i have two elements in here right so i'll put an extra element on my on my table what happens with this uh, of course with this uh, line here becomes red again it always will take the color of the um, of the control that basically has not performed so you get it into a green a go to only when both pre-production controls have been performed and that's how it's done and let's say that we also did the control for the next one of course it does not prevent us from putting the concrete it is just an indication in that sense uh, when i right click i will say set status of the table to produced and of course you will expect again the colors to change and back to activate the post production controls in the same sense as we did with the with the pre-production we will go inside we will say element control find the post production which is now activated we have symbol checks which is basically if the color is correct right and then we have the measure checks and now we can go into our mobile app and try to say okay now the length it is checked and the length is like you know nine two nine eight zero and if i try to see here this becomes red this is because i have predefined the tolerance as a project manager or as a person who knows has more experience that like i want maximum five millimeters of tolerance here so when the actual value becomes here 2980 then automatically becomes red and gives you a warning when you try to save that this uh, the tolerance is exceeded of course you can say yes that's okay or you can say no and of course fix your value to 2975 continue with the rest of the controls write the actual values here of course this is again something you can also do from the mobile app which i'll show in a while and then the diagonal you can say a value here whatever it is control activated measurement checks green symbol checks green post-production check green we close this and then we expect again for both of those to be activated and the color also changed immediately in the model view and i hope if linus you are with me i hope you get the same so this is how a workflow goes regarding the element controls right so we add the element controls on an element put the element on the table perform the pre-production controls perform the produce it put the concrete the post-production controls and then change the status automatically now linux a good question for you might be now i do not have only one control type i might have three different types of controls that i want to perform is that not something that for example you usually get in um, yes. yes yeah absolutely 
and uh, we have had cases where we have uh, like three, four uh, pre uh, pre production For controls two. and exactly. uh, like three, four post production. For post production and before yeah. transport <laughs> and and you know everything until they reaches you know the, the the track. So everything can be handled here in in a sense. However, I'm I'm showing those two uh, controls basically only to show what is possible to do automatically because what I prefer personally as Thomas is to basically do not use uh, the human effect here on setting the status um, by myself. So if I can avoid setting the status by myself and make the software change the status while I'm performing an act in the software, then I prefer that. On, on that and in order to see that now in a little bit more detail now it's going to be boring it's it's you know it's to show you how we create those um, those controls so here in the element controls here you will see we have in this database now back in the resource manager in the settings right and uh, we are looking here i'll just take this category because i have made my own so i don't want to bother with other people's um, you know uh, controls so as you can see here i have my pre-production and my post-production right and you can also you know add inspection images you can have like uh, add to the control you know different uh, pdfs or uh, pictures uh, that can be predefined right but you see here the most important thing is the status type and the status type planned and approved means that when this control is performed before it is produced, the status will change to planned and approved. The same for produced and approved. When I want to add more controls that they will not be attached to a status, then I can use always the status type, no status, and have as many controls around. Personally, if there is a possibility to it, if you can combine your three big types of controls into one, the pre production one, and then wait for the status to be planned and approved then you do that now for example in in another here i think i have made one that's called for example rc control right and you see here that there is no status and this has to be done i want to check my bars if they are okay before they even moved to the set before i put them on the mold right so i want to make sure that the controls are done and uh, properly performed so in that case you cannot really combine it with a pre-production control or i mean if if you were me, you would. But uh, personally, I I would prefer to combine those two together. But if you want to have an extra status in the system, like uh, between here and here, 32, for example, you know, rebars, okay, then you have to set it yourselves when that control is performed. And how can you do that is by, of course, right clicking, set element status and selecting the corresponding. As you see, I have blocked my, um, my rights out because I really don't like doing that personally. Uh, and that's it. When you perform, when you make the main controls here, you can find them under a big list. Remember, assign it to the different element types, and then you just go here the pre production. See, here I have like my wall Thomas, my sandwich wall Thomas, and you create your checklist here. You can add again your inspection images, your checklist. And you can always double check and uh, and make you know this is the simple check the measure checked and so on and so forth very easy to create but of course it will be this is a one time thing that you can always of course um, do it with the help of of uh, myself or linux or or another person that uh, you are already helping you uh, doing the implementation of the software or of course our great support um yeah this is uh, this is it a little bit regarding controls and and how they work the different aspects of it as you see it is just controls it is nothing nothing special nothing uh, amazing uh, you know that uh, it is more how you can do what you are doing today adjust it a little bit so you know how the software works with it um now if if you allow me maybe i can just print out uh, this uh, report this cast report and uh, and do this control for example on my mobile phone so you can also see that you can basically take a few pictures and um, 
and do the pre-production control. Let's see if the report tool is going to wake up at the same time. I will open my application and uh, I will also open TeamViewer on my phone. Let's see if that will work now. I have this here. Allow, start broadcast. You can see maybe here. Oh, you can already see my screen. This is the this is the impact app. Take it out. Bring it back in here. As you can see, too many systems, too many windows, but always good. You're pressing the QR code, you scan the cast, you are just here selecting the element. As you can see, I have the phone on my hands, information, controls, and then you see the two different controls. You can uh, start the pre-production control, select it, done, 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 save, go backwards, inspect. You can either select, take a picture. I will just take a picture straight away from here and I will use the photo and or you can of course select from a big uh, from your own uh, camera feed if you pre-take the pictures and uh, do that. I will say save. Uh, most of you don't have uh, don't have uh, you know a desire to look at my daughter uh, being sick and so that's my last picture so I I avoid that uh, adding that in here. So I'll say save and then go back and go back and uh, refresh the status and I'm expecting status 35 and when I just of course because this is the mobile app right so this of course needs a little update to get the new status then I'm expecting for this to get also this light blue color changing the status and of course the same happens uh, down here in the in the cast planner and going back going back to my going back to my uh, excuse me to my mobile app no, where is it I, it's right here going back here then i can select now the plan for production the header back to produced set and the status change to 40 and again perform the controls for right after so i don't have to do it twice i can check my controls and say you know select and control color save measure checks and you know you can always remember that you can add remarks you can add you know uh, you can add the text that you will um, you will be able to to do hide diagonal save and then back to the main one open it up save and you can also take some images if you want again i will take my keyboard as a thing save back and hopefully going back here press refresh and status 45 from that point on of course you can assign it to storage location and so on and so forth right but what happens now and that's important also if we get um, if we get that this element actually the control was performed right and uh, we got a disorder we got an issue so instead of uh, you know going back to the software and doing that let's try to do that from here so i select this um, this element and of course it should not be approved now and i go down to my issues and I create a nice little disorder. So I create a disorder. I will select a user to assign to. Hopefully I can find Mr. Carlson here. I think that's the one. Let's hope so. And then I will select, select the reason. The reason was production. And then- You can actually add... take the, the other one that is ending with the admin as well. <clears throat> yes. If I find it, Mr. Carlson, 
you know. Cow some. Let's see. There Linus we have it. Carlson. Yes. All right. That's a bad thing having so many people in your company, I guess. <laughs> and then you see here different sub reasons and reasons, which I'll show you very quickly how to set that up. You make a description. In this case, uh, it was uh, difficult, or I don't know, just a crack, crack. You get a you get a picture also. In this case, do I have a crack here on my wall? No, I do not. But I will use this photo. Let's say that this represents a crack. And then all the way back down to create. I can also create an email, add a recipient, Linus Carlson, and also add myself. And that's very important that you can actually, you know, do that. And let's say that I'm done here. Save, and now I will say create, and let's see if the disorder is created, if it's also created in the, so we have an active, oh, I have already got an email, and I will just take it out, and show you directly here that this was received right now, 126 in a split second, and I got all the information to Linus Carlson, myself also, and a picture of your control. Of course, you can add more information. This is not the scope of the webinar, how to add more information. I suppose most of you, or when you use the software, you will understand what more fields you will get to be able to, to add there, which is, uh, which, is basically, which is basically great. And now I have an active, uh, an active disorder. Now my phone closed, which means that I will have to start the broadcast again. And looking into the calendar, like while this restarts here, you can see that if I refresh my, my, my computer here, you will see that there is a disorder count here. I have a disorder count and the disorder count is this one. So what happens now, Linus, you look at this mail and you come back to me and you say that this element actually should not be planned and approved for production, should actually be rejected because it is not uh, it cannot be saved anymore yes we need to re remake it so yes so in order for an element to be rejected in the system right uh, it has to be produced if this table here it's not set to produced set status produced or from the mobile app then of course you cannot reject the element so we take this element, we right click on it here on the cast plan and we say reject element. Simple as that. We come here. Now I will do it from the from the from the project manager so you can see it in, in that sense, right? So you can see it from here. I can now create a rejection, assign it to Mr. Linus Linus Carlson. Uh, let's see if I can find him again, Mr. Carlson. Carl Carlson. Here he is, Mr. Carlson. Right. Make a description. Uh, need to reproduce, and then replant that for the day after. Same mold. If of course the mold is occupied for next day and you do not really have any place you can leave it you can take that away and replant it yourselves you know you can put it again in an in an in a in a place where you have space or find the corresponding cast unit here and replant it for that uh, cast unit of course i will create an email again i will add the recipients you can have a list here or you can search for myself i will search for myself also so i get this say okay and then add my corresponding attachments. And uh, again, this is uh, different pictures and say this is the crack that I did and, and need to reproduce. And I will say, 
okay and again hopefully in a, in a second replant and while this was replanting and being status back to to 30 i got an extra mail saying that i have this rejection the picture i just added and all the information that i needed i guess linus you got the mail also which... yes both of them perfect and of course you do not need really to set up anything special you just have your users your mails and be able to send those those things to each other so this is a main workflow when we have non-conformance in the software you can either do it from the mobile app or you can do it of course from the planner from the cast planner now this element of course the controls are added because this element has controls right and perform controls from the beginning again scan them and uh, set it to produced and so on and so forth what we did here because i get this question a lot of times even though it is a simple um, it is a simple explanation i guess but what we did here is we did not create a, a double element on the model view what we did is we created a double ghost element as i like to call it in the cast planner this element you produced you use this concrete here this is something that it's already on your scrapyard right so so this one is basically double production concrete so when you come to your workload you will see that you basically on your on your chart graph here that you produce both elements like not only one that you were supposed to produce all right and that's how the production um, and that's how the production basically works there uh, setting wise if you want to see it setting wise the issues that i described before and you saw in the mobile app is basically can be defined here and every issue has a reason a sub reason and a category if you know if you have a, if you have used you know if you've been many years in the um, in the business you have maybe some you know sub issues why do we do it like that because we want to be able to identify specific issues issues that are repeated and then avoid them of course for next time and also categorize our rejections and disorders on a specific way in this case i will say rejections here and see if i have a rejection this is the rejection of the element that i that i got you can of course uh, see it here if i say edit and see the information that i did here when linus and the team or you know produces the element or solve this then they can change the status to resolved and the and then we do not have an open rejection okay the same of course happens with the disorders in in a disorder of course there might be a solution that we can find without recasting the element so all the information that you need is here and uh, you can just uh, you know you can just look into it and try to find the corresponding um, the corresponding issues here of course here the timeline does not really match our um uh, our issues here so i will just say refresh data maybe we can see some uh, of uh we need to select all and then try to see if we get any nice disorders and yes we are back you see here the filtering we need to remember that if we select the filter and then you can have all the filters here and see how many design issues i had how many design issues cost a disorder in a project then you can do that in a monthly basis or in a yearly basis and then you have great information about your factory um, a small thing i want to mention is of course that there is different you can create of course and that's more technical now right we're reaching the end i'm not going to use a lot more time but if you stay up to the end i have a little little small small surprise for you so please uh, because i'm actually running the q2 release here the the release that we're planning to to give out in 12 days from now the 28th of may and uh, we have done something here regarding the controls and the disorders and the rejections that i would like to show you so if you if you stay uh, for five more minutes then i will be able to to do that for you uh, so if i select an element here i can right click and i create a disorder for it right 
So this is a way to create a disorder on an element that has not even, even been planned for production. I activate it, I create a new disorder, and the process is the same as before. Right? So I create as many disorders, create a mail, notify my team, notify the whole project management team over there that this is going to be delayed for some uh, special reason, right? So this is a way to do it by creating a disorder, but if it's not really a disorder and uh, you do not want to do it like that, then you can actually come here, select this element. So for example, let me make the picture here. So the element ID, the name, print the screen, select it like that, copy to clipboard, and then right click, say add notification, title, uh, missing missing RC delayed uh, yeah the title in this case it's the same as the description you can add an attachment you can take a picture again and say like this is the picture that I want to add find the recipients uh, Linus uh, Carlson uh, Strusoft and then we have uh, Thomas Kitsas at Strusoft also and then uh, create an email and add attachment. I have uh, forgot to add the attachment. I just browse for files, but of course, when you take, you can paste to clipboard from here. Okay. So maybe if I print the screen now, maybe here it is name one, two, three. And this is, this is how it works and say, okay. And then uh, I think it creates a little um, a little email that pops out in my eye. Look, it's a label with the two attachments, and I send it to my my process connect to my Outlook basically, and do that send this. But this is not what I wanted to show you. This is a little bit the workflow of uh, how we do disorders and um, and rejections especially also from uh, from the mobile app you can see here uh, for example if i do that then i have the possibility always to either print the detail element controls or now i have the possibility to print the detail controls with the space with inspection pictures and if we see it more in here in the rejections and disorders, I have the same possibility actually to print all rows per uh, with one element per page and say this. And you see here, I have made these tests regarding the rejected reports with pictures in line and hopefully, hopefully it will work as it should work. So you can actually get the pictures and the information here. Also, you put them here as an attachment and you get it also down here. Of course, there is a lot of improvement here. This is not a real report, but you uh, as professionals and people who are using these detailed reports, uh, let me also show you one in the controls and how that would look. Let me refresh. So this one, for example, I can say print detailed element control with inspection pictures. Let's see one control per page. So let's see how that would look. Basically, all the inspection images, PDF attachments, uh, and all the information that we have add on every control, they are added under the, the main control here. Okay. So as you can see here, approved, approved, approved. And for the post-production, we got this picture and this picture that we added in our control in the pre-production. So you can actually print this and save it or store it as a file. You don't even have to print it out, save it or store it as a file. Or you can, of course, if you do not want to print it physically, you have all the information that you need right here inside the database, which you will never lose in a sense, especially when you're filtering out per project. Um, yeah, that is it for me for, uh, for today. I think uh, I'm pretty sure I showed most of the things I wanted to show. A, most, a lot of you might knew these things, but uh, this is the new thing. You can print out all inspection attachments. 
images, PDFs inside the Excel. I have tested it myself. It works pretty well and I'm very happy to set up some reports with you guys on how you can actually be able to, to do that. Uh, Linus, do you have any questions? Do we have any questions in the in the chat? Uh, not what I can see, and I don't have any questions. Uh, you covered okay. everything that I expected. It's a very okay. good. Uh, maybe the, good maybe view. maybe I should cover something that you didn't expect. Yes, maybe. that's always uh, nice. Well, what uh, what is something unpredictable that I should maybe have mentioned here? Don't put you on the spot. It's fine if you don't have anything. I mean, it is very. It says you said it. It's just controls, uh -huh. right? It's not. Yeah, tell me. Uh, no, but I I don't uh, have not uh, like any of those questions right now. Um, okay. I think. Um, How? I think you covered most of the things. Controls. I think I covered that maybe. You were not with us, but how to define controls? You define the controls here, and there is a smarter under the settings. As I said, this is the boring part of the training where you create an order starting from 0, 150, 50, 150, 53 by creating, assign them to different element types. And then, if for example, you are using only linked elements, which many of you do, and in your case, Ram, you are using linked elements right now, uh, then you can make different categories so you can have linked elements and a category called you know beams another linked elements and a category called uh, slabs and so on and so forth for the different types of elements and then you define the main controls plus the controls you want to add and under the main controls you have the possibility to find those like myself here find it and start doing the different symbol checks measure checks and of course, add your um, your PDFs and the text lists and all this information that we have discussed that we need to add on the control. So it is very very basic and very easy to to do. Uh, I actually come up with uh, with one unexpected or not unexpected one, but a little bit complex uh, question yeah. that uh, maybe you can uh, you cannot show it because it uh, requires just, a lot of stuff. Just but give it give it out yes. and uh, let's see if so, I So so when you fill in the controls in both the mobile app and in uh, product manager you could uh, not fill in in whatever order you wanted to but isn't it uh, possible to for me as a user to decide what order I put the the check uh, check marks in what order yeah i think that's also yeah that's also here in a sense because you start from zero then you go to one then you go to two and then for example if i say save now it doesn't really matter but then when you go to the actual main settings then you have the possibility of doing this um, mandatory checks that the control or follow the control order right so and the check order so we have both control order and check order so if you do not follow this then you will not be able to go the next one and the next one. In order to do that, yes, you have to put you have to put a check order one, two, three, four, five. So we follow that order. Oh, that's perfect. And also, I just saw one thing that maybe we should highlight. We yeah. had this uh, three state um, check. Oh we yes, yes, I forgot them. about it. Yeah, that's so yes. true. That is so true. And uh, we have created this uh, new. Uh, I, I have a question from Jacob. Uh, I will come back to you, Jacob, regarding that. Uh, so, two seconds. I just want to show this three-state status. It's a new thing that we have developed. I don't think we have shown it before. It, if you have yes here, then for some times, for example, if we try to do this control here, and this is relevant, but this form check is irrelevant for this element. Instead of, you know, I have to check it, but it's, it is not true because I have not really checked it. So if you triple click on it, then you get this not applicable remark here automatically, this dot, and the next one is activated. So if you want to do something like that, then you have to do it with the three control checks. So sometimes, for example, the sandwich walls with the solid walls, they have the, the same checks except for three or four that they are extra for the sandwich walls, but not for the solid walls. 
So when you reach that point, then you decide, okay, you know what? I will um, I will press three times this and say that it is not applicable. But of course, we will show in the in the so you do not have to create the same you know controls all the time and all the time. Some people like it like that. Some people don't. So now I have a question about a ghost element. The production here you consider adding another ID to the model upon rejection. We still have uh, the slab starting somewhere uh, five to twelve. No, because if we add another ID, um, I mean I understand your point, but uh, sometimes you know using reality, I have to combine reality with software, and your reality it is true here, but but the thing is. That in the software, if we add another ID, we have to add another element. So it's it's the main principle of how the software has been built on like one ID per one element, right? Uh, yeah, I we yeah, in certain suites with a manual element it is possible, but this is something you have to do it yourself because you have to make sure that the manual element has the exact same properties as the one. Uh, the one that you are going or copy this element, put it on the side. I have I have done that for a couple of customers. So you need to copy this element from here, put it on the side on a building number two, which is rejects or something, and then use this uh, switch elements placement uh, and try to uh, uh, yeah exactly. So and then you get. Uh, the same thing. So if it's the same mark, the defect ID would have issues comments. Yes, exactly. That's that's correct. And the new one we will uh, will not. And if you switch the element IDs, then you take this here and this ID here, and that means that the uh, all the building, which I don't really like it, but if you have a building with rejects, for example, if you have so many, right, then you will get all by switching the element placement, you take this element from here, basically moving it to the rejects and the and the one that you created, putting it back here, and then you make the controls. I prefer to use to use to use it like that personally, but I do not plant plant so many elements. Uh, uh, I do not plant so so many. Yes, exactly. Yes, I know. I know what you mean. Uh, in, in, now, Jacob is saying that they want to reuse this element on another project, and the other project, you know, and and yes, exactly. It is. It, it, we can. It's a workaround. Like I mean, I have done it for another customer, so we can discuss about it uh, more. Feel free to contact me. Uh, we can discuss it more. I don't think the webinar is a is a good place to discuss specific workaround, but I get what you mean. I, I, ha I have done that for customers, so so yeah, we can we can actually do that. Okay, so yeah, we can copy the element and then assign it, or create it, or move it to another project in a sense. So we can reuse it in that sense without having any comments on it. Yeah, any more questions? Then uh, thank you a lot for today. I was hoping we'll take half an hour. We took, of course, 50 minutes because I speak a lot. So very nice, <laughs> very nice uh, to see you all and that you were engaged also and uh, and saw the webinar. And uh, I will be attending the British Precast exhibition tomorrow and uh, by the end of the week. So I will not be available, but for Monday, feel free to contact me and um, and uh, we. And I, or Linus, of course, Linus he will be here tomorrow, I guess. So yes. uh, feel free to contact us, and we are always here to help and uh, try to adjust your controls and and make more out of the use of the software. So thank you very much. Have a great uh, have a great afternoon, and uh, we'll see you all in the next webinar. Hopefully, uh, I think it's because before the summer period, uh, Linus. Do we have one webinar? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah, yeah, in a month or so. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Linus, for the support. Thank you for the good questions. And, and thank um, you, Thomas. Appreciate it. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Same. Bye.